this video will teach you how to create a manipulation composite using uh, two images. In this case, we're going to use image of a food and image of a face. We'll also talk about gradients and creating a gradient background and basically kind of putting it all together into one image called face on a food. And we're going to start out in Pixabay. And I already started looking for watermelon. Um, if you need to, you might have to set it to photos because if you go to all images, I'll show you what I see here. We have some illustrations and like clip art. Um, I, we want to work with photos only for this assignment. So I'm just going to choose photos. And I'm looking for an image that doesn't have too much texture. Um, I also like images with more of a blank background because they're going to be easier to cut out. Something like this would be a lot more complex because there's a lot of things going on in the background, a little harder to cut out. So pay attention, see if you can find one. Like this one would be perfect. Um, this would be good too. I think I'll actually do this one for now. Let's click on that one. And then I'll just click download. I'll download it to the computer. And since we're on Pixabay, we are allowed to use these without any issue. They're free to use. We're going to go to Photoshop. And I'm going to open up my new image. So file open, find your image. Here we go. Now you can do this at any point, but I'm just going to show you now because um, it's all on one layer. I'm going to unlock this layer. We're going to cut out the watermelon. So this is where it gets a little tricky. I'm going to show you the quick selection tool. And that's going to be right over here. Right click if you can't find it. It looks like this, quick selection. I'm going to make sure this plus sign is selected. And you can control the size if it's a big thing like I have a big um, a big brush works just fine. And if I go ahead and just click, you can see how it selects part of it, but not all of it. So I'm going to go to the rind and I can click and drag. I don't want to do it across the whole image and select everything, but definitely the watermelon itself. And that's pretty close. I'm missing a little bit of that rind. If you go too far or it's not selecting, um, or it's selecting something you don't want to select, you can um, do the minus button here and that'll get rid of it. So if I click on this and accidentally select too much, I can click the minus button and say, no, I don't want that selected. Let's get rid of that selection. You only want the dancing ants around the outside of your um, object that you're trying to cut out. I'm gonna get a little more of this rind here. I'm just gonna try to not get too much of the shadow. And I'm not looking for total perfection, but you know, get it as close as you can if you have to zoom in. Um, a little bit. I'll use my zoom tool. You can see those dancing ants. That looks pretty good and I can always touch it up from there. So I'm cutting out the uh, object itself because I'm going to put a gradient background in. All right, so we have the object selected. From here, I'm actually going to go up to select and then we're going to go to inverse. So now I have the entire background selected. From here, all I have to do is press delete on my keyboard. And now you can see that transparency, everything has been cut out except for the watermelon. Now there's still these dancing ants, so I'm gonna go up to select and then deselect, or you can do control D. So select, deselect, or control D, and now the dancing ants are gone. All right, so we're zooming back in here. I'll use the hand tool just to kind of position. There we go. I'm going to do a new layer because we're going to put in a background. Now, some of you have used the gradient tool before, but not all of you. So I moved, I made a new layer, and I made sure that this layer, this new layer is below everything because we're going to put the background here. Your gradient tool sometimes is underneath the paint bucket, so you might have to right click. If you're not seeing it anywhere, you might have to click on these three dots down here and then see if you can find it underneath that panel. The way I have it set up, it's going to just be underneath my paint bucket. The gradient tool looks like this. And then there are some really nice preset gradients inside um, of Photoshop that you can choose from. So quite a variety of presets. I'll just show you with one here. Um, with gradients, a lot of times students will click on that and they're like, well, now what? Um, you know, it's not working. And you actually have to click and drag to draw your gradient in. And the cool part is, is you can change the direction of that. You can you know, really play around with it. Um, you can also double click on those points and then easily change the color. So these little circles here, double click, and I can change it to whatever color I want. It's like super vibrant. I'm going to go back to my layer zero because now I'm noticing that there's this spot right up here. I don't know if you can see that right there that I missed. It just selected part of it and I must not have seen it. So I'm going to actually erase that quick. Make sure you're on that right layer. And this happens all the time. So I'm just going to 
touch it up a little bit. If you have any areas you need to touch up, the eraser tool is really good for that. I'm just going to kind of use my hand tool to move around, see if there's anywhere else I need to touch up. I think all of this is okay. Yeah, that all looks good. Okay, now we can zoom back out. Minus button. There we go. Okay. All right. Now we need to put a face on the slice of watermelon, and we're looking for a human face. I'm going to look for an angry face. So I'm going to just type in angry face and see what I get. And I'm going to make sure I'm under photos. And from here, I kind of have to be a little bit picky and choosy. Um, some will work better than others. Um, like this, we're not looking for this. We're looking for like a human face. Um, you could possibly do an animal. They're just, they tend to be a little harder to cut out. Um, so just choosing any human face will work. I kind of like this guy, angry man in a hoodie. Here we go. And then download that image. All right, we're going to go back to Photoshop. I'm going to go to File, Place Embedded. Place the man in there. He's covering up the watermelon, but that's fine. Right now, we're just going to focus on cutting out the face. So when you're doing this project, you want to make sure that you uh, are only using the face. We're not going to have, like, the hair. We're not going to have clothing or anything like that. We're just focusing on the face. Um, so there's a few ways you can do this. You know, you could do... You no know, quick selection, kind of like we did before. The hard part is sometimes it selects a lot of extra. Um, or you can just erase, start erasing everything around it. So I'll just show you that method. And I'm going to use the eraser tool. And the eraser is going to have 0% hardness. Don't forget that. That's actually on the, um, on the rubric. And we're going to make this a nice large eraser so I can erase away a lot. Make sure you're on the right layer. It's going to give me this no and it's going to say rasterize a smart object. All that means is when I put it in and I imported it, it's a smart object automatically. I'm just going to rasterize it to turn it into a normal layer. So it's asking if I want to do that. I'm just going to click OK. Perfect. So from here now, I'm just going to erase all this outside stuff. I'm just going to try and hone in on just his face. I'm probably going to have to make this eraser smaller now. Just a really fine tune. I'm getting rid of the hoodie. It's okay if there's a little facial hair, but I definitely want just his face. I kind of got the face cut out. Now I can just erase away that extra. There you are. All right. Pretty good. Now, in my opinion, this face is kind of too small. Oh, there's some more there that I missed. Let's grab that. That happens, especially when your photo goes off the page. Get rid of everything else. Everything. And I can always touch it up later, too. Cool. You can always see it better when you move it around. There's a tiny little shadow there. I'll erase that later. All right, we're going to resize. So we're going to do Control-T and make this face bigger. A lot bigger. Just so it's more visible because a lot of times when students struggle with something like this, um, the biggest issue is that they, uh, it's too small. And you can't really see it. Okay. Now I'm also going to rotate. If you go to any of these little anchor points here, you can go to the edge and then click and hold like this. It'll rotate on an axis. So I'm just going to rotate a little bit because the watermelon's at an angle. It's just going to help it blend in a little more. Cool. Okay. So right now is a really good place to save just to make sure I don't lose any of my work. So I'm going to do file save. Here's where you're going to want to call it face on a food, make sure it's a Photoshop file so you don't lose your layers, and then click Save and OK. So at least you have a backup copy in case we lose power or something. And now I need to really blend it, because right now it just looks like I did a kind of crappy Photoshop job on a watermelon. So I'm going to go ahead and just take a look at some of these blending options, which we've talked about before, like Darken actually works fairly well there. Multiply isn't too bad. It's a little dark, so I might have to play around with adjustments on that, which is part of the assignment. Not all of these are going to work. Like that one, definitely not that one. Definitely not that one. Just kind of scroll through, see what's going to work, because we still want the face to be visible and not like totally. Actually, that one's really good. I like luminosity. So you can still see the seeds there, too, which I like on that. Um, I can still see the face really well, and I think I'm actually going to get rid of his wrinkles here, his forehead. So I'm going to go in with my eraser again, soft eraser, 0% hardness, 
It's because I want to kind of get rid of those wrinkles and some more of that facial hair. I just want it to blend a little more in with the fruit. That's not too bad, actually. Some other things you can play with are things like opacity, if you need to play around with that. I'm not going to do that because I don't think it needs it. I am going to take a look at image adjustments and then levels. I might increase the shadows a tiny bit, maybe the midtones. I don't want it too bright, just enough to really notice it. Yeah, that's too bright, so let's bring that down. Something like that. I'll click OK. And I think I'm pretty happy with that. I could make the face a little bigger. So if I do Control T again, um, let's see if I get my points here. It's just such a big image. <laughs> really stretch it out a little more. And I could still kind of adjust if I need to. If it needs to be more visible. So I'd say that's pretty acceptable right there. That's a good place to stop. I'll do File Save once more. And now I'm going to export. So we will go to File, Export, and then I'll do Export As. Choose my format as JPG or JPEG, and then click Export. And I'll call this Face on a Food or Watermelon Face, Angry Watermelon. And then this is what you would upload to Google Classroom.